Chapter 25 Rise Wakey, wakey! A great slab of a woman called Georgie shouted as she burst into James's bedroom. It was better than the makeshift facilities at the Brisbane Mall, with eight metal framed beds, personal lockers, plus a purpose built shower and laundry area at the end of the room. James was bleary eyed as he rolled out of bed. He'd arrived at one in the morning and stripped off without waking the room's seven other residents. These boys were now scrambling into a uniform that looked like a PE kit. White rugby shirt, blue shorts and blue football socks. James took longer than the others because he had to grab new clothes from inside his locker and remove a mass of plastic bags, tags and stickers. Once dressed, James joined the back of a line, queuing up to pee into the single stall or the urinal. He was the last to go, and even though he skipped washing his hands, James couldn't catch up in time to see where everyone had legged it to. Georgie came in from another bedroom. She screwed up her eyes as if she couldn't believe what she was seeing and bellowed in James's ear. Why the hell are you still here? I haven't got a timetable, James explained. I don't know where I'm going. All pupils are on the same timetable, she shouted, spraying James with spit. Follow the others. But they've gone. You'd better learn to keep up with them if you don't want a punishment. Down the stairs, through the doors and onto the quadrant for morning exercises. James sprinted down the corridor through a door and into a face full of sunlight. A set of steps on the outside of the building took him down a dusty patch at the rear of the accommodation block. The 150 pupils ranged between 10 and 17 years old and stood in four long lines. Everyone wore the same white shirts, but each line wore different colour shorts and socks signifying the building they lived in. As he joined the end of the blue line, James spotted Lauren standing two rows ahead in yellow kit. Georgie and a couple of other teachers stood up front and started the kids off with some old school warm up exercises. They did stretching and toe touching, working their way up to thrusts, push ups, crunches and star jumps. They had to chant a short sentence between each movement. Good morning, Lord. We are your angels. Here to serve you. Make us strong. Please protect us. Our souls are honest. Our thoughts are pure. We are leaders. We will take humanity through the darkness. The 10 sentence chant matched the 10 repetitions of each exercise. After 15 minutes of springing up and down in the dirt, James was breathless. His skin was covered in a layer of reddish grit and the lines of the chant were the only things in his head. After getting two minutes to catch their breath, the four lines were led out through one of the turrets for their run around the perimeter. James estimated that each lap was about a kilometre and a half. They ran a lap in formation at a modest pace, keeping up the chant. At the end of this, the instructors shouted, BREAK! and the kids were expected to run two more laps as fast as they could. James spotted Lauren and ran alongside her. <sighs> you okay? James puffed. <sighs> could have done with more sleep, Lauren said, her words jerking as her trainers pounded the tarmac path around the perimeter. <sighs> and I've got grit. Hold down my shorts. James scratched his belly. <sighs> Tell me about it. It's driving me nuts. What's your name? A kid asked as the line of dusty boys staggered back across the dirt towards the blue accommodation block. The kid looked 12, but was actually a year younger. He had a rugged build and a squished up nose. James, I'm Rat. James didn't quite believe what he'd heard. Did you say rat? 
Well, my name's Rathbone, but if you ever call me that, I'll kick you in the bollocks. James smiled, but he was also surprised. Survivors didn't swear. Cat got your tongue? Rat asked, apparently pleased to have shocked James. I'm just knackered, James said, shrugging listlessly. Rat nodded. You did good. I've seen plenty of new arrivals keel over from the heat when they first get here. How long have you been here? James asked, when they reached the bottom of the metal staircase. Just my whole life, Rat said. He pulled the leather necklace from under his shirt. It had half a dozen beads on it, but he pointed to a gold one. What's that for? James asked. Rat smiled. It means I'm part of the royal family. Eh? Joel Regan saved the best till last. I'm his 33rd and final kid. Cool. Rat shook his head, like James was an idiot. What's cool about it? James found himself lost for words again as they reached the entrance of the boys' dorm. The lads were stripping off for a shower but Rat stopped walking in the doorway. Are you queer? Rat asked bluntly. James shook his head. No way. So you like girls? James smiled. Yeah. Naked girls? They're my favourite kind. Come on then. Rat grinned, tugging at James's shirt. James looked uncertain. What are you doing? Rat tutted. Don't be a pussy. It'll only take a minute, and I swear this will blow your tiny mind. James tried to work out what he should do. There was part of him that wanted to behave until he knew the lie of the land. But on the other hand, Rat clearly wasn't your average brainwashed survivor brat. He might make a useful ally. Go on then, James said. We're not going to get in trouble, are we? Don't be an idiot all your life, James. I'm going to be standing right alongside you. I've done this a million times. James let Rat take him a few metres back along the corridor. He opened a door into a wiltingly hot room, which contained a huge water heater with pipes and gauges running in all directions. Rat whispered as he headed towards a table in the far corner. Keep your voice down. He clambered onto a table and signalled James to follow. James stepped up and turned to the wall. There was a metal grill in front of his face, which Rat was already staring through. James put his eyes up to the holes and gasped. Isn't that awesome? Rat whispered. James was looking into a steaming shower room packed with the girls who lived in the dorm across the hall. They were laughing, shampooing their hair, and rubbing soapy hands all over themselves. Oh, James grinned as his mouth dropped open. Told you it was worth it, Rat whispered. Totally worth it, dude. I want to stay here for the rest of my life. There was so much female flesh on display, James couldn't keep his eyeballs fixed in one place. Suddenly, Rat smashed his hand against the grill and shouted out, Perv alert! Before James knew what was going on, Rat had jumped off the table and was heading for the door. He'd unscrewed the grill in anticipation of the prank and it clattered down inside the shower, causing a flurry of screams and a mass exodus of girls. James jumped off the table and lunged for the door. Rat had pulled it shut, and as James grabbed the handle, he heard the unmistakable sound of a key turning in the lock. You butthole! James shouted, kicking the door hard. Let me out of here! I'll smash every bone in your body! James panicked as he looked around and realised that escape was impossible. 
a bunch of girls were shouting abuse from inside the shower room. You're going to get punished for this, pervert! 30 seconds later, someone was banging on the door. He recognised Georgie's voice. Open up this instant! She pounded again, and James tutted at Georgie's apparent lack of brain power. Do you think I'd lock myself in here? This triggered a pause in the noises coming through the door before Georgie erupted into a bellow. Rathbone Regan, get out here! When there was no reply, she shouted again. Don't make me come into that shower and drag you out! James heard a kerfuffle through the door. It sounded like Rat had been bundled out into the corridor by some of the other boys. Was it him? Georgie demanded. Normal kids wouldn't have grasped, but survivors are taught that the devil will get them if they lie to a superior. We saw Rat with a new kid, miss. He came running into the shower half a minute ago. Rat started screaming at his roommates. You snitch-assed mother- Rathbone! Georgie shouted. You're in enough trouble. Do you want me to soap your tongue as well? Where is the key? Rat's response to this demand was a giant raspberry, blown into the palms of both hands. I don't care what you do to me, fat ass. You don't own me. Miss, we've got the key, another boy said. It was under Rat's dirty shorts. The key turned. Georgie grabbed James by the collar of his shirt and shoved him up against the corridor wall. The floor was covered in puddles, where various dripping boys had scrambled in and out, but Rat was the only one left. His hair was foamed up with shampoo, and he wore nothing except a towel around his waist. James shot Rat an angry look before speaking to Georgie. Miss, he tricked me into it. I know he tricked you, Georgie nodded. I know he locked you in there, but look at the size of him. He didn't put his arms around your waist and stand you on the table, did he? No, miss, James said weakly. I want you both to shower and wait downstairs for the service. You can expect to be severely punished. What about breakfast? Rat asked. Tough. James stepped into the bedroom, which was muggy from the steam escaping the showers. The other boys were either in the final stages of getting dressed, or they'd already headed downstairs for breakfast. Thanks for sticking up for me, guys, Rat shouted to nobody in particular, as he threw off the towel and stormed back into the shower to rinse his hair. James ripped off his sweaty kit before following Rat into the steaming shower area. They were the only lads left, and Rat backed up to the far wall, looking scared. I ought to slap the piss out of you, James said, pointing angrily as he grabbed a bottle of shampoo from a ledge. I'm not scared of you, Rat said, but he looked less sure as James closed him down. He ended up with his back against the tiles and James's chest a few centimetres from his face. Go on, batter me, Rat said defiantly. I don't care. That cow wants you to, and you won't be the first. After lashing out and landing himself in trouble more times than he cared to count, James had recently become a master of turning the other cheek. Why'd you play such a stupid, pointless trick on me? Rat tutted. Beat me up and get it over with, but don't expect me to squirm in front of you. James didn't know what to make of this kid. Was Rat some kind of survivor rebel, or did he just have a screw loose? What's our punishment going to be? James asked. Oh, you'll love it, Rat grinned turning around and showing James his bum. James recoiled as he looked at a mass of scabs and bruises, some of them still pretty fresh. Are you kidding? James gasped, 
suddenly a lot more worried about the trouble he was in. Rat shrugged. They can paddle me all they like. I'm not going to tow the line. Come to think of it, you're not one either, are you? One what? Rat smiled. You don't really believe. Uh, how do you figure that? James asked nervously as he lathered up his pit hair. I took the oath. I've got the necklace. You might wear a necklace, Rat said. But if you really believed, you never would have come into that boiler room to look at naked girls. And right now, you'd be telling me to repent and accept our punishment. Maybe I'm just easily led, James said. Rat shook his head. If you were dumb, I'd be sitting on the floor with a bloody nose right now. Don't get too full of yourself, Rat. It might still happen. So how come you ended up here? James explained about Elliot getting stabbed and Wayne covering it up as they stepped through to the bedroom and started toweling off. Oh, I know him, Rat nodded. We used to call him Elliot the Eel because he's so slippery. Do you realise you and your sister are the first new faces to come inside the Ark in three months? Yeah, the people in Brisbane said there's a lot of construction work going on or something. Rat smiled. Have you seen any? James realised he hadn't. So what is going on? Joel Regan's dying, Rat explained. The spider doesn't want people outside the Ark finding out, because when my dad dies, several billion tonnes of crap are going to hit the fan. Why? James asked. Rat was clearly getting a kick out of finding someone who wanted to hear what he had to say. The whole survivor religion is based on the idea that God asked Joel Regan to build an ark and save humanity. But how can he save us when he's dead? Yeah, James nodded thoughtfully. I can see that's tricky. On top of that, there's a war raging over who takes control when he dies. Between who? My dad's fourth wife, Susie, and my eldest sister, Eleanor, the spider. Susie is sane. She doesn't even wear a survivor necklace. Eleanor's lot are the opposite. They believe every word in the manual. They say that if my dad dies before the apocalypse, it's a sign that the devil is winning. When he dies, they're gonna freak. Like how? They think the devil is going to rise up from hell and try to kill them when my dad dies. And they live in a fortress with guns, explosives and ammunition stashed in the basement. It's not a healthy combination. James remembered that he was supposed to have fallen into the cult's belief system. But how can this be true? The survivor's manual says... Rat burst out laughing. <laughs> Oh, yeah, right, James. Your survivor beliefs are somewhere between paper thin and non-existent. That's not true, James insisted unconvincingly as he pulled on a pair of boxes. He was worried. If an 11-year-old could see through him, who else was going to? Do you know, when my dad joined the Australian Army, they gave him an IQ test and he scored 196. That basically means he's a certified genius. They tested me, and guess what I got? Low 30s, James grinned. 197, Rat said. I'm the smartest kid you're ever likely to meet, so don't even try pulling the wool over my eyes. James couldn't help smiling at the irony of this situation. If you're so clever, how come your butt looks like a rugby team used it for kicking practice? Rat shrugged. People are always telling me I'm too smart for my own good, 